to my channel and if you're new I am Jessica Christine and welcome to the family. Today's video is something completely different, something I've never filmed before and I'm super super excited to film this video. Um, I didn't rehearse this video, I didn't really go over it at all. Um, I just had an urge to kind of make this video and these are usually the best type of videos to do when you have those urges that just come right from your soul and right from your heart. So that's the video that I'm gonna be working on today. Um, and thank you for stopping in. Um, this is a little bit different of a setup back here. As you can see, I have a big window in my house and it just shows my backyard, part of my backyard. I have a pretty big uh, backyard in general. So um, yeah, so I thought it'd be very cool to do like a scenic nature background in this video because this is all about connecting to the universe, finding the best, you, finding your life path, uh, talking a little bit about numerology, which I've been really into lately, and just literally this video is going to change your life. Um, these are not ideas from anyone else. These are purely ideas that I have experienced that work. Um, it's something that I do daily um, to try to further connect to the universe and live with my soul instead of my ego. So I have a little notebook here. Um, I might be glancing down. I have a couple of notes that I just want to go over and I want to make sure that I hit everything. So let's jump right into it. So this video is going to be things that I have found to be extremely helpful when trying to figure out your life purpose and trying to connect with the universe and really figure out what your calling here on this earth is. So the first step is go barefoot and touch the earth. I can't stress enough how important this is. So normally you're walking around in shoes, you're outside, you're enjoying nature, you're going on walks, but you're not exactly physically touching the earth. Um, you're usually in sneakers, flip-flops, regular shoes, toms, whatever you're wearing. Um, but in order to completely connect with the universe, you need to go barefoot. The reasons for this are that I have found personally, um, these are all tips that I've personally done. I've tried out a lot of things that were recommended to me before and they just, some of them just didn't work for me. This is something that has transformed my relationship with the universe. And it is going outside and touching the earth. Hugging a tree, even, counts as touching the earth. Go out in nature. It is so important. And when you do, make sure that you are barefoot. Um, you know, it was funny. For, for example, I was laying out on my deck trying to get some sun one day in between um, my two jobs and I was laying there and I was like, oh my God, something came to me. And I was like, you know, like I have this strange urge. I'm like staring at the grass and I have this strange urge that I just want to go walk on the grass barefoot. Like something was like pulling me to go walk on the, the, the grass barefoot. And I honestly couldn't tell you guys. As a kid, I used to do it all the time. I remember, and I'm sure you have similar um, instances where when you were a kid, you were running outside, going in your sprinklers and your pool. If you have a pool, I don't, I've never had a pool, but um, I used to use sprinklers, run around on the grass in the summertime. Um, I would walk barefoot on the uh, cement. Even I, when you're a kid, you're so carefree. You you could care less about putting shoes on. And think about how happy you are as a kid. It is just pure joy, and that's why people love kids. And they their hearts melt when they look at a kid because they're so carefree. They don't care what anyone else thinks. They do what they want as much as they can at least and you know they're so happy so what I've been trying to do is ever since that moment that I was laying in that chair and I was like why is there something pulling me to go run barefoot across the lawn or just stand there and soak it all in. And I ignored it, I did. I, I ignored it, I was like, you know what, it's rained recently, the grass is probably gross, so I ignored it, kept laying out, went in. And then I laid out the next week and I didn't even think about it. 
and I have the same pull. Leave in the comments down below if you know what I'm talking about. You know that the universe is trying to speak with you and send you messages. Um, and you get these strange pulls where you're like, oh my god, like I feel like I really need to do this right now. Kind of like I've been getting a pull to go to Bali, but that's for another time. Um, but yeah, this was such a simple pull and I found myself not doing it. And I was like, why am I not, why, why? What is stopping me from doing this? And I thought about it and I realized, you know, like laziness. Like I just didn't want to walk down there and go on the grass. Instead of thinking about the benefits that it could bring me if I did do that. So something useful that I found is to follow those guts you get. So what I did is I went down and I decided to stand on the grass. And um, it really wasn't even that wet, even though it rained recently. And when I was down there, I found this beautiful rock. Um, and if you know me, I'm very into crystals. I'm very into stones and rocks and things like that, um, which I'm sure if you're watching this video, a lot of you are too. And um, I found this rock in the middle of the mulch in a flower bed that we have in our backyard. And I was like, why is there this beautiful rock just sitting here in the middle of red mulch, like with no sign of like rocks around? So it bent down and I picked it up and I held it and I was like, oh my God, like this is so crazy. Like I can add another rock to my collection. And I was just standing there and I decided, you know what, like I don't remember the last time I walked around my backyard and just explored my backyard. When I was a kid, again, going back to when I was a kid, I would always, always go out in nature. Um, I had my Beanie Baby hunts outside. I'm sure if you guys are in your mid-20s, you guys can relate to that, or upper 20s even. Um, we used to have Beanie Baby hunts outside. And if you don't know what a Beanie Baby is, it's like an old little stuffed animal. Um, and they were like collectibles. So I had a bunch of those and I would do them outside. Everything I did as a kid had to do with being outside and being connected to nature. Now, this is something that I have recently discovered. Um, I, you know, I didn't really think about this too deeply before. So what I did is I decided to walk around my entire backyard. And I, and I, it, it had to have been like 10 years since I've done this. Just walk around my backyard and kind of take in the beauty of nature. Um, you know, I've done it in other places, but why not try to do it in your own backyard? So while I was barefoot, I decided to do this. And I was walking around, and as I was walking around, I was having these flashbacks of being a kid and moments in certain areas of my back backyard that I had, like certain picnics, certain times I spent with my best friend growing up when we were three years old. And you know, it was a very emotional experience for me. Um, and it's something that I wasn't expecting to <laughs> go through. All I was doing was trying to get some sun on my deck and chill and not be at work. So um, yeah, it was very unexpected, very strange, but that shows you the reason for the pull. The universe wanted me to reconnect to myself as a child, wanted me to reconnect to my childhood. This is huge, guys. Walking barefoot in nature will connect you to the universe and your sole reason for living. It will connect you to their soul rather than what you're used to, which is most likely, most of you, your ego. I am still every day practicing living my life with my soul instead of my ego. I am in no way, shape, or form even close to perfecting that, but I am on a very good trail to doing that. Um, I have a very good sense of self-discipline and I know the steps that I have to do to get there. So, let me guys know in the comments if you guys have had any pull moments like that that are similar to mine that kind of made you go like an aha moment. Like, oh my God, this is why I had that urge to do that. 
So, while I was walking around my backyard, I was having all of these ideas come to me. My creativity was on another level than it ever has been. And I just continued to walk around. And I saw that um, two trees in my backyard, which I can't see from my house window, had the most gorgeous flowers on it ever. Like the most gorgeous. It was just fully in bloom. And I was like, oh my god, I was taking it all in. And um, I decided to hug my tree. And you know, you see that on a lot of like spiritual websites, like Instagram, stuff like that. Like, go hug a tree today. And you're like, yeah, okay, like whatever. No. Like, I hugged this tree and I felt an immediate, such deep connection to the universe and nature. It was so insane to Mother Earth in general. And I really encourage you all to go out there and hug a tree as cliche as that sounds it really was the most amazing experience guys and doing this brought me back to my childhood it brought me back to being a child and my true self my true form not caring what anyone else thinks not caring about what I had to get done that day about work about a nine-to-five about my side businesses about you know who I have to hang out with later no I felt no pressure. I felt full peace being out there. It was the craziest experience ever. And I know that that wouldn't have happened if I didn't listen to that pull to go walk in my backyard, touch the grass barefoot. It all started there. So I'm telling you guys, step number one, walk outside barefoot and be fully present. Be fully present when you're barefoot, look around, be aware. What is the universe trying to teach you? You will connect with nature, you will connect with Mother Earth, you will connect with the universe when you are barefoot touching her, touching the earth, touching the ground, touching a tree, connecting with nature, being one with nature, not being two separate beings because all we are is energy and human bodies. You need to just connect with nature, be one. So <laughs> that's my number one tip. My second tip is to think about what you wanted to be when you grew up as a kid. This goes back to childhood. Going back to childhood in your life is extremely important. That is where you will find your life purpose, I promise you. So what was your I guess I can call it life calling when you were a child. What were you wanting to do as a child? A lot of people say actresses, singing, uh, teacher, something along those lines. Um, leave in the comments what your life calling was when you were a child. For me, it was two things. It was a singer and a teacher. And I've always had a good singing voice uh, my entire life. Growing up, I would be like the star of plays in school and things like that, and I was a super shy child. So this was extremely uncomfortable for me. It wasn't something like, oh yeah, I wanted to be like up on stage. It was so uncomfortable for me. I had severe stage fright, but I decided, you know what, everyone's like, you're so good that you have to do this. And I was kind of like forced into it, but I'm so glad I was because it helped me overcome a lot of my fears. So being a singer was one thing. Being a teacher was the other thing. Now I would, as a child, have fake classroom settings in my bedroom. I would have a whole classroom style of kids watching. I had the biggest imagination as a kid. And this is something to keep in mind. Know that as a kid, you had the largest imagination, as do all kids now today. And that's why we find them so cute and so almost you find them curious, like, huh, like you just stare at children in awe, kind of, at least I do. <laughs> so yeah, you, you had a very large imagination as a kid and I did especially when it came to teaching. So I could literally visually see a whole classroom in front of me and I was always the teacher. I loved teaching. And 
I always, you know, every single day, it's funny, as a kid I acted like I had this as a job. Every single day I would go ahead and um, create this classroom setting and I would say, yesterday I assigned this homework for you and today it's due. So let's talk about our assignments and go over it. And I would literally have in-depth lectures with my classroom about their different homeworks and I would set up scenarios for different students on what they had to say. I was so beyond creative and teaching was my passion along with singing. Um, singing was always something that I did on the side. I would always come home from school and just sing, you know, um, but I like on the weekends would always devote my time to this classroom, to teaching these kids and I would have so much fun with it. And I was such a big learner too, uh, especially when it came to the outdoors. So think about what you wanted to be as a kid. This can lead to enormous signs as to what your life calling is and you wouldn't even recognize it. So, or and you wouldn't even like think of it normally. So I know that in the past I've read in certain books and um, on Instagram and stuff because I follow a lot of like spiritual um, Instagrammers and uh, on Tumblr I have a lot of people that I follow um, and YouTubers that I subscribe to about spirituality and things like that. So I have definitely heard the what did you want to be when you grow up when you were a child thing before and I never really thought about it until I did it and I was like holy moly like I wanted to be a teacher my whole life and look at what I'm doing now <laughs> teaching on YouTube um, all of my videos have been about teaching and even in school I enjoyed going to school I enjoyed learning I'm a big learner I love learning I'm reading a really great book right now. Um, it's called Light is the New Black by Rebecca Campbell and it's incredible. I'll let you know when I finish it, uh, what I learned from that book. But yeah, um, there's just a lot of signs from when you were a child that will lead you to figuring out what your life calling is. And I didn't really act on the fact that I wanted to be a teacher when I was a child um, at all in my life so far. So just keep in mind, I wanted to be a teacher when I grew up. And now I'm seriously, seriously thinking about what I choose for my career because you guys know that uh, YouTube is very part-time for me um, because I do you know I have these other jobs and I don't think actually I know for a fact they're not right for me it's just temporary so until I switch out of those which will be soon um, I'm really starting to think about becoming a light worker um, teaching people this type of stuff, like how to find your life purpose. There's a lot of light workers out there, um, a lot of light workers, and you are probably one of them if you're watching this video. A light worker is someone who wants to make a difference in the world by being of service to the world in a positive way. So that is what I know that I am being called to do and that I want to do. A lot of teaching, a lot of learning is involved in that, but I'm so ready. Um, so yeah, if, if I hadn't thought back to what I wanted to be as a kid, I wouldn't know now what I need to do uh, for my life path and my life calling. Step number three also goes back to childhood. Think about what your first word was. Now, my first word, and maybe this isn't for everyone, but my first word was outside. Believe it or not, that's a pretty hard first word to say. Usually it's mama or dada or something like that. Mine was outside. Very clear. Um, I said it to both of my parents. I pointed to the door and I said, outside. Um, this is huge for me uh, to kind of go back and remember what my first word was and kind of figure out why. Why was that your first word? That was my first word because that is what I loved most 
was to be outside, to be out in nature. I never really cared for being inside. Um, I always loved the fresh air. I loved finding the little worms outside. I had this strong connection to worms. <laughs> and that might seem really, really weird, but I have read online that there's a lot of people out there that as kids, they love worms. There's something about it. I feel like worms have a very strong energy um, to, um, children for some reason. I think they have a strong energy pull to them and I think because we're so um, caught up in our egos and our lives, we don't even as like adult humans even think of worms. We think they're gross because of the way they look because everything we think is based on looks um, because it comes from the ego, so we're like, oh, that person's ugly, oh, that animal's ugly, oh, that dog's ugly, that baby's ugly, like, it's, that's just how adult humans are nowadays, and it's a shame, but that just shows how far people come from their childhood. Huge gap there, from a childhood, your authentic self, and then your ego self, which is your adult human. Now, a lot of light workers are adult humans who are trying to connect back to their child life. Um, this is something that I'm trying to do and so far so good. Um, it's everyday practice though, everyday practice. Um, I'm nowhere near being, you know, exactly how authentic I was as a kid. Um, but that is my goal and that's what I'm working for. So yes, my first word was outside. I was very connected to worms. I always wanted to make little homes for them. Um, I remember at Walmart they used to sell these little like homes for like insects and worms and like you can make like little nature homes in them. That's what I did um, and I would go, I have a hill on the side of my house, um, I would go on the hill and kind of build them houses around like the moss that was on the hill and stuff and I just loved connecting to other earthlings and other beings in nature. It was just something that was so far in my heart and soul and no one could take that away from me. Um, and I loved it so much that I literally forced myself to speak the word outside because I couldn't stand being inside anymore and I needed them to know what I wanted. I needed to be outside. So that was number three, thinking about what your first word was and then connecting that to where you are in life now. Was your life, was, was your first word mama or dada? Maybe there's something that you need to connect further with, with one of those people. Um, was your first word uh, Nana, maybe go visit your Nana and have like a very deep talk and um, about how you're feeling in life and maybe that will lead you to um, new creative thoughts or inspiration. Uh, you never know. So based on whatever your first word was, go out and figure out what the sign is behind that because I promise you there is a sign. Number four is work in a beautiful place every day and enjoy it. This is so important. This is something that I've recently started. You know, it's funny, everything connects when it comes to the universe, everything connects. I'm thinking about how much I don't like being indoors half the time and I like to be outside, but yet the work that I do is always indoors. So in order for you to absolutely love what you do and find your life purpose, you need to be in beautiful places, surrounded by beautiful places so that you can enjoy it. And this is something that I've recently started to do. When it came to um, my side businesses at least, I um, decided to you know, go to the beach, to spend um, time outside more, to start filming clips of the outdoors. Um, I can't film outdoors today because it's raining and um, I don't want my camera to get wet but I'm definitely going to be filming a lot more outdoor videos coming up on my channel and a lot more videos like this. Um, so yeah, so 
I've been going to the beach more often. After that experience walking barefoot in my backyard, I'm out in nature every day. I'm out in nature for at least an hour every single day. And I've started to incorporate my um, planning for my YouTube channel outside. So for instance, yesterday I went to the beach, I brought my notebook, I brought a book, my headphones, and I got to work. And what I mean by work, Maybe that isn't the best word to use because for me, it didn't feel like work. It's exactly what I wanted to be doing. I was so happy to be doing it. I was so happy to be in those surroundings. Um, you know, you're, you're brainstorming. That's what I would call it. I got to brainstorming. Um, I have so many ideas, so much inspiration lately, and just creative ideas going insane in my head ever since I've discovered, um, you know, all these connections in my life. I'm definitely 100% going through a spiritual awakening right now, and things can be a little bit crazy when you're going through that. So in order to kind of bring myself back to my authentic self and figure out, okay, your ego is saying don't do this because, you know, it might not work or ego is always based on fear. Um, that is what an ego is. An ego is based on fear. So that's the thing inside of you that tells you that you're not good enough, that tells you that you shouldn't do this because it's not gonna work out in the end or you just don't do something because you're so scared to do it. That is your ego talking and that is what you came here to this video to stop. So, what I've learned that works is to be outside in beautiful places and better yourself. Get deep into your thoughts and figure out what are the steps that are going to take me closer to my authentic self, to my authenticity, to the universe, to nature. What is going to really connect me to those things? The answer is be in a beautiful place while doing what you love. Your work should be what you love. You should not be forced to go to a nine to five job every day just because it's gonna give you money and you're going there absolutely miserable. What are you gonna get out of that? More of your ego, more fear in the future that that would happen again, um, fear of not being good enough in your job, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. It's not going to lead you anywhere. And I'm here to tell you that right now because a lot of people are going to tell you that you need a nine to five in your job to to live your life, to start a family, to buy a house, to do this, to do that. False information. You can go above and beyond what you would be able to do in a nine to five if you just take the time to deep dive in yourself. Take time off. Take time off from that job. Take time off from that nine to five. If you actually feel like you can stay there. Um, and deep dive into yourself. Go out in nature daily. Take a notebook. Take a pen, take a book, take your headphones. Listen to inspiring YouTube videos based on all of this information. Don't just watch my video. Go on YouTube and search best ways to reconnect to your authentic self, to nature, to the, the universe, um, things like that. So it's so important, guys. Once I started doing this, ideas started flooding to me. Ideas about different videos I can make, businesses I want to start, uh, YouTubers I would like to collab with, um, lots and lots of different things. And then just on the personal side, ways to better myself, how to be more positive daily, just ideas have been running wild in my head. And they're all amazing positive ideas that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't start working out in nature out in nature, connecting to these beautiful places, going to the ocean, walk into the ocean, barefoot once again, because like I said, I started to incorporate that into my daily routine. 
So when I was at the beach, even though it was absolutely freezing, <laughs> you will get used to it, your feet will get used to it, I walked in the water and I'm so glad I did. Um, it's just such a cleansing feeling, being out in nature and it will literally cleanse your brain. It will cleanse your mind and you will realize, oh my God, like, I wouldn't have had any of these ideas if it wasn't for me taking the step to be outside in a beautiful place. So then you're gonna get so addicted to that feeling, so addicted to all those ideas that come to your head that you're literally going to force yourself to do this daily. And then you can start producing content outside. If that's your thing, that's my thing. I'm gonna start producing content outside. Um, I've already started writing out all of my ideas in my notebook outside. I don't have those inspiring ideas indoors. I just don't. Um, I feel like the air just isn't fresh indoors. Um, you know, I just have this connection to outside air and the universe, like all humans do. We just have to reconnect and find it. So that was my fourth tip, to make sure that every day you are working in beautiful spaces so you can enjoy it. The fifth tip I have today is ASMR. Now some of you might have heard of ASMR before and some of you might have even seen the video that I made on my channel which I will put out there is not the greatest. It was just, I just winged it because I was like, you know, like at the time I really get a lot out of this. Let me try to create that for others but I definitely need to, like if I want to make that a thing, I need to make it a separate channel and I need to buy um, actual equipment way better microphones for that. Um, but basically what ASMR is, is Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And what that means is um, basically the sounds of tapping at different speeds on different things. So a lot of people do wood, some people do cement, just different surfaces, um, even this. Some are louder, some are quieter. The sound of tapping, if you didn't know this, is a form of sound therapy. ASMR is sound therapy, basically, if I could say it in a nutshell. The sounds of certain people's voices can put you to sleep. Um, I'll leave in the description below my favorite ASMR artist. Personally, Gentle Whispering, Latte ASMR, and I like uh, Whispers Red ASMR. Those are my three favorites. Um, so, yeah. ASMR has been such a big part of my healing, such a big part of, you know, being able to sleep at night. Because <laughs> a lot of the times when you're going through spiritual awakenings, you're having all these crazy thoughts, all these crazy dreams, all this inspiration just thrown at you all at once and you just can't seem to sleep. That's been my problem now for the past month, at least, I want to say, and um, ASMR has actually been helping me sleep for the past three years now, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't turn to anything. It helps, like, I wouldn't turn to anything more than ASMR. It helps with my stress, my anxiety, and to sleep. All three of those is what ASMR helps with. It quiets your mind. It's It works for me better than meditation works for me personally. So if you have trouble meditating, try listening to ASMR videos, always with headphones, um, before bed, and just don't judge it. That's all I have to say. Personally, I didn't have feelings that I just wanted to judge it the second I started, but a lot of people are like, oh, like this is weird, like what is this, this is different. Remember, that's your ego talking. So if you're trying to connect to your authentic self, a child wants to explore everything and just watches everything silently and absorbs everything. So try to do that, and then if you don't like it, have an opinion on it, I guess, but, you will like it. Um, you will find that it is completely healing. <sighs> when it comes to your anxiety that is so overbearing, I'm sure, as most people's is, 
it will literally cure your anxiety um, for the night at least and it will help you sleep immediately so yes that is the fifth um, tip I have as to reconnecting yourself back to nature. Um, it's a life-changing thing, I promise. So those are the five tips that I have for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching through the whole video. I really hope you guys got value out of it. I had an urge to make this video, a universal pull to make this video, I should say. So I hope you guys really, really enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. It's it's just a topic that I'm so incredibly passionate about and I really want to help others. I want to help everyone else and I feel like I have a pretty good sized platform at this point in time. I have almost 3,000 subscribers so if I can just reach out and you know hit one person that this just resonates with them, I've done my job. I feel good about myself and this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to come up with ways to teach people how to be their better selves, how to reconnect back to their childhood, figure out from their childhood what they can take from that to reconnect to them and to their adult human. So yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave in the comments what you thought about this video. Tell me your stories. Tell me about your life polls. Tell me about any situation you're currently having. We can discuss it in the comments. I'll try to, you know, help you out with your individual problems in the comments. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye guys.